Hello there. My name is Crimson Shade. And today, tonight, whenever you're watching this, I'm bringing you another fan fiction reading. This one is special, however. It's a heartwarming eve fan fiction. A really good one too. I remember I remember reading it a while back and it it touched my heart. Like most of them do, to be honest, but there is something, there is something, like, better about this one. Something unique. And so I thought, I might as well do a reading of it for you. This is Three Nights by Bradle, or Bradle. I apologise if I pronounce your name wrong. Chapter 1, Parents and Children. Heart's Warming Eve, 972 AB. The night was sharp and bitter with the taste of unfallen snow. A tiny filly, little more than a foal, picked her way among the towering trees of the forest. Overhead, pale stars twinkled in the moonless darkness. Bare branches scrabbled against one another as a cold wind moaned through them. The filly hugged her wings tight to her side, but her feathers did little to hold back the chill. Her eyes hurt. She felt tears welling up in them, but the frigid night air froze those tears before they could drop. Her legs, still not accustomed to carrying her weight for any length of time, trembled and gave out. She collapsed to the carpet of fallen leaves in a splay of hooves. It didn't hurt. She didn't have far to fall. In the distance, she thought she saw a glow. Maybe? Her eyes weren't very good, and the freezing, stinging tears did nothing to help. Even if it was a glow, it was so far away, she, she didn't know if she could make it that far. For that matter, she didn't know if the glow meant anything. At least it was different from the craggly, creaky trees all around her. But would it be any better? She didn't know much, to be fair. She didn't know where she was, and she didn't know how long she'd been here. Worst of all, she didn't know her own name. She didn't know anything, except how to walk. A low rumbling filled her ears, and she felt a stab of discomfort from her stomach. And how to be hungry, apparently. She knew that too. Thin wisps of clouds scuttled across the sky, blotting out the stars in their passing. Without their light, the night seemed to grow colder. She struggled back to her hooves, but was too tired and weak to support her own weight. Again, she collapsed to the bed of leaves. The stinging in her eyes grew stronger. She felt a hitch in her throat. Like something trying to escape from inside her chest. She let it, and a high, thin wail split the night air. It sliced through the howls of the wind. It wasn't very loud, but after all, she wasn't very big. That makes three things, then. She knew how to walk. She knew how to be hungry. And she knew how to cry. Sometime later... She still hadn't recovered her ability to do the first, but she felt like she was getting rather good at the second and third. The tiny filly heard the sound of hoofsteps crunching the fallen leaves. An enormous figure of shadow appeared before her and started making low rumbling sounds of its own. The sounds seemed vaguely familiar, though not the voice that caused them. The figure towered into the night, like the trees behind her. It continued making its sounds as it paced around her, its voice growing louder, and the sounds took on a note of panic. She continued to cry. It looked down on her with two green eyes that shone faintly in the starlight. Its voice fell silent. For long moments, it stared down at her, 
she tried to fight her wails back into her throat, and with a hiccup, the crying subsided. With a hoof, the figure scooped her off the forest floor and deposited her on its back. The figure's coat felt soft and furry, much like her own. Close up, it was a shade of reddish brown. She burrowed into it, hoping to find some measure of warmth. The wind still bit at her. The filly felt movement beneath her and noticed that the trees were passing by once again. She was going faster than her own legs could take her now, and there was definitely a glow. It seemed to be getting quite a bit closer. Suddenly, the bare-branched trees vanished, and she found herself in another place. Big boxes rose all around her, with yellow glowing lights coming from holes in their sides. Everything was so tall, taller than even the trees had been. One of the lights in the boxes winked out, and she started in surprise. The movement unbalanced her, and she felt herself slipping from the tall figure's back. It stopped and reached for her with one hoof. It was too slow. She fell to the floor once more. She fell much farther, and this time she had no bed of leaves to cushion her fall. Air left her lungs in a rush of pain. She struggled to suck it back in, but finding her breath was difficult, especially when she did. When she did, she found that her body didn't want to, didn't want to keep it. Against her will, the sharp wailing began again, perhaps a little louder this time. The figure wasted little time. It returned her to its back and continued through the rows of glowing boxes. She, she, stri she tried to stop crying for it, thinking the figure probably didn't care for the noise any more than she did. She just hurt so much. She was tired, really tired, and hungry as well. She buried her face in the figure's coat, muffling her wails a little. Her tears must have made the figure's coat wet, but she was tiny and it was large. It didn't seem to notice. Ahead, one of the shiny boxes was growing much closer. The figure walked up to it and wrapped a hoof against it. A new hole opened in the side, letting out even more light. She raised her head and looked up into this hole. She saw another figure framed there. This figure was rounder and shorter, though still many times taller than she herself. It was also a dusty grey colour, different from both the red of the figure she rode and her own. She looked down at her hind legs. Pink. She was pink. And, she noticed, much less wrinkly than either the red one or the grey one. The reddish figure, the one that had found her among the trees and carried her here, stepped into the box. It reached up and plucked her off its back, setting her atop of something. She was still crying, she noticed. She tried to stop again, and this time it seemed to work more effectively. The pain had faded a little, and she found that it was much warmer inside the box than it had been outside among the trees. She was still hungry, however. Very hungry. But everything else seemed better now. She hiccuped again and then fell silent as she watched the two figures before her. The grey one was making noises now. Its voice wasn't as deep as the red ones. It sounded worried, she thought. Upset, maybe. The red one sighed and waved a hoof. Then it made quite a lot of sounds. Some of them tickled the back of her memory again, like she could almost understand them. As it talked... The red one wandered further into the heart of the box. The grey one stayed exactly where it was, studying her and occasionally turning its head to call out to the red one. After a minute, the red one returned with a little bowl full of something. Little white chunks. The smell hit her as the red one came closer. She knew what these were. These were apple. 
and she liked apple. That makes four things then. Walking, hunger, crying, and apple. Apple was definitely the best of those four. The grey one stepped out of view for a moment as she started to eat. The apple was wonderful, as she knew it had always been. Then the grey one returned, carrying a strange object that looked like it came off a particularly odd-looking tree. The red one walked over to the grey one, and they pressed their faces against one another for a moment. After which, the red one turned and cantered back out into the cold, dark night. The grey one stayed and began to make more sounds at her. It then raised the branch-like object to its mouth, and a new type of sound emerged. She had never heard anything like this. It reminded her of the wind in the tree branches. But where had that sound had been harsh and frightening? This was warm. Her mouth fell open. A little bit of half-chewed apple dropping out. She watched the grey one with rapt, attentive hunger. No, rapt, attention, hunger, and apple completely forgot. The grey one took the branch away from her mouth. The tears returned to the, her eyes, but she refused to cry. How could she let herself make those awful wailing sounds now? That was no way to thank the grey one for the beautiful sounds it had just made. She fumbled with her hooves and pulled her bowl of apple closer, stuffing some of it in her mouth. The grey one laughed. And that was a beautiful sound too. Then, it began to talk to her in a rambling voice, like it didn't know what else to do. Um, oh, this is a song. Uh-oh. Tonight we join and celebrate a tale of long ago. When snow and ice encase the land and not a thing will grow. Eluna and Celestia and all we call Equestria. Gather round, tell the tale. Come join and sing of the first heart's warming eve. The unicorns, move sun and moon, but winter's grip was strong. The pegasi on clouds above could not correct the wrong. With failing crops and starving falls, no earth pony could ease the toll. Gather round, tell the tale, come join and sing of the first heart's warming eve. In conference met pony tribe, but no consensus found. Recrimination ruled the day and ran all hopes aground. With hate and anger set ablaze, the three tribes went separate ways. Gather round, tell the tale, come join and sing of the first heart's warming give. Each tribe set out to... Each tribe set out to find new lands not bound by ice and snow. And when they did all met again, for they had found it thrice. Then as their wrath did reprise, the wind began to bite and freeze. Gather round, tell the tale, come join and sing of the first heart's warming give. To save themselves from winter's cold, they hid within a cave. And one by one, each pony throws all those by rage enslaved. 
But from each tribe one clung to life as one they banished hate and strife. Gather round, tell the tale, come join and sing of the first heart's warming give. Tonight we join and celebrate an end to ice and snow. Three ponies of Equestria, they set their hearts aglow. The flames of friendship burning bright have banished endless winter's might. Gather round, tell the tale. Come join and sing of the first heart's warming eve. Amidst the chaos of sounds coming from the Grey One, small pieces seem to shimmer and coalesce in the air, almost as if she shouldn't be able to understand it. She didn't have the cadence quite right. Okay. That was Three Nights, Chapter 1, Parents and Children. Written by Bradle. Okay. Um. <laughs> um. I should have known that song was coming. Um. I forgot about that. Sorry, guys. Now you have to hear me sing. <laughs> yeah, I've usually been compared to a dying cat, so I haven't the best hopes for this, but... Oh, well. Forgive me. I shall be bringing you chapter soon of this... Chapter 2 of this story real soon. Um... Thanks for tuning in, I guess, and hope you enjoyed. See you around. Crimson Shade, out.